Good evening. This is CTV News for Tuesday, April 19th. I'm Patricia Vallone. And I'm Gina Barti. Glad you could join us tonight. Greenbelt police continue to investigate an incident that happened in Greenbelt where in which a 28 year old man um, was shot and killed by police. Authorities say the man had allegedly been firing at law enforcement. Denise Douglas has the story. Investigators could be seen inside the third floor apartment of the alleged gunman. It's still a matter of our evidence technicians collecting all evidence related to the Everything they, they can gather, they gather uh, to forward the investigation. Police say the incident began Monday evening when officers were called to Franklin Park at Greenbelt Station Apartments in response to a call that someone was shooting a gun. The first thought I was really scared because, you know, like uh, the buildings we have here, they are not really tough. I was scared for gunshots could pass, stray gunshots could pass, as we normally know. So, I, though we're looking, but uh, we're a little bit scared and to me, I might just say I think some there was a problem. He had the problem because when he left his car, he was really in anger going up. It yeah, didn't surprise me because it's not that when you walk around the neighborhood, it's not that kind of environment. It's mm -hmm. friendly people, um, people speak to you. So for that to happen, no, it's definitely not that kind of neighborhood. But you know, things happen. So it was really crazy for that to happen last night. At some point, the alleged gunman hit a police vehicle and fired on the officers, according to police spokesman George Matthews. That's when an officer returned fire shooting and killing the man. We have no motive at this time. Uh, like I said, we received multiple phone calls that the individual was just you know, randomly firing shots. And when the officers got here on the scene, was actually firing on uh, the police officers. Matthews said the officer who fired the shot is on paid administrative leave, as is the department's policy in such situations. Denise Douglas, CTV News. The alleged gunman's name has not yet been released since his next of kin hasn't been notified. Funeral arrangements for fallen firefighter John Ohm Schneider have been set. You may recall that he and volunteer firefighter Kevin Swain were shot Friday night as they responded to a 911 call in Temple Hills. Investigators say the men forced their way into the home because of what they thought was a medical emergency. Ohm Schneider died of his injuries. Swain continues to recover. At this point, no charges have been filed against the shooter. The firefighters union says breaking into a home to check in someone is common. It's not an unusual type of call that our members are, are used to responding to. Uh, it's something that we deal with every day, and as Chief Beshore indicated, it, it has saved lives. Now, the visitation for Alm Schneider is scheduled for tonight from 5 to 8 at St. John's Parish. That address is at 43950 St. John's Road in Hollywood, Maryland. The funeral mass will be tomorrow at the same location beginning at 1 p.m. with a private burial to follow. In other news, Jack Johnson files an appeal with the state's U.S. District Court asking a judge to reverse his conviction and sentence. In a sworn declaration accompanying the motion, the former county executive claims he was unaware that he could bring DNA reports linking two envelopes containing hate mail sent to his family into evidence. The 67-year-old says his sus he suspects the notes came from a member of the county's police force, although there is no tangible evidence proving it. Johnson has completed 50 months of his 87-month prison term after pleading guilty in 2011 to extortion and witness and evidence tampering charges. Today marks the one-year anniversary of the death of Freddie Gray. His death sparked days of violent protests in Baltimore. Residents and activists are rallying and holding vigils throughout the day today. According to prosecutors, the 25-year-old died from a spinal cord injury he received while being transported in a police van last April. The case still remains unresolved as six officers await trial. And you are watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. And I'm Gina Barti. Coming up